I felt I was going to not be able to survive. I was still extremely sick. And because I hadn't eaten, I was getting weak and I was getting, by the moment, more paranoid because my, my system was changing because of nutrients. You know, I was not being refueled. And I didn't have any money. I had no money at that point, none. And I didn't know if I was going to get any. And I was at the point where I felt like I was starving. Had you contacted any of the people that... Uh, no, not at that point. I was alone. You, was, were, you were afraid to get off, to contact those people? I was, because of all the circumstances that had gone on, I was afraid of everything that had pushed me to that point and literally made me become this outsider, okay? And I was afraid to get anybody involved because of what had happened to me. And people that I had talked with said, don't get anybody else involved because it will be a worse situation for them and for you. Well, at the time when I had heard that from some of these folks, I basically didn't believe them because I was still on the other side of the fence at that time. I still felt that this was America. I could do whatever I wanted. I could live the way I wanted. And government and society would support me. Well, all of a sudden, that came to a crashing halt when everything started failing that I knew as a reality. I mean, it was literally being taken away. Some of it was being taken away by my own demise, by my own process, because I took myself away finally as a salvation to get out of the path of what was rolling down my road. But that's what I'm not proud of. I'm not proud of the fact that I had to, I mean, I ate out of garbage cans. You know, for two months, I went behind restaurants and ate what they threw away because I didn't have any money and I wasn't thinking clear enough yet to force myself to start putting things into some kind of order. And then I reinvented some of my priorities. I literally sat down and said, I can't exist like this. I cannot go on like this. And I started thinking about suicide. I started thinking about what are my choices? Do I have any choices? And I learned real quick I wasn't suicidal because there is a reason to continue. And that's where I kept going. There is a reason to continue. And at that point, I felt a necessity to retool some of my thinking to start thinking like a survivor, not as a victim, to start thinking of how am I going to go about maintaining my body so that I can get to the point where I can get some help and deal with this. So that's that was kind of part of my first evolution from going from what I consider to be my, my past life, my normal life. So how did you make the transition? What were the steps? Some of the steps were evaluating how other people maintained their life, realizing what homeless people really were all about, and that they weren't just the animals of the street, that they were human beings too, that had made a transition and learned how to live in a different style. And I became a homeless person. I mean, literally. And I, I made friends with some of these people, and I talked with some of those people, and I saw the side of that humanity that I had never seen before. You know, coming from middle or upper middle class, I had never touched that before. I had read about it in a newspaper or heard something in the 5 o'clock news, but to me, that was foreign. That was nowhere near my world. Well, all of a sudden, I was the student, and they were my teachers. And I had to learn to take on what they had to teach me. I became their student. And I learned that through the sincerity of dealing with human beings, that people will help you. Even at the bottom of the barrel, they will help you. They know the honesty. There, there isn't a question, you know? The trading, the bartering becomes different. You know, you don't work with a credit card any longer. You know, you work with a helping hand. You work with getting somebody a coat or them giving you a coat.
coat or a blanket to survive the night. And that is a totally different thing that I had ever been used to thinking about. So I had to learn how to adapt to a world that I was totally foreign to. You know, and I see that totally different now. You want to talk about aliens? Those people have been, you know, isolated in a world, some by their own choosing, because society, for one reason or another, has dealt them uh, a hand that they weren't planning on having. But it's a long road back, and it's very difficult for those people to come back, because the rest of us don't accept them. I mean, we look at them almost like they're animals, and they're not. They are exactly what we are. They're just standing in a little bit different angle. You know? and, and those are some of the things I had to change my way of thinking about. I had to learn to accept my situation for what I had at the moment, and then little by little start to make some small steps to decide what am I going to do with what's happened to me here? What am I going to do with my life? Not just what the information I was given with this event, but my life has a value that I had never seen before. This value is tremendously important. And little by little, I had to start to think in a different way about what life was to me, not to the rest of the world, not how my friends saw me or how the government sees me or whether I pay my taxes on time or I, or I vote the right way, but how I was dealing with myself in my own step-by-step -step environment per moment of each day to just survive till the next morning. People don't think about that. I never did. That's part of the evolution I had to go through. And it's a, it's, a, it's a difficult thing to think about when you're sitting in a warm environment with coffee on the table and, and heat and you're surrounded by comfort. When you're out there on the street laying underneath a car or a bridge or whatever you're sleeping on, and I'm not only talking about me, I'm talking about a lot of other people, you have a totally different perspective. I mean, you're lucky to be dry. The cold is a whole nother consideration, but just dry. If you're dry, you survive. That's what I started to think. That's, that's how finite this starts to cut, right down to the very bottom of your soul. And each moment becomes a gift. I had never seen that before. I had never experienced it. How many of us ever experienced that? So that's part of the process. And little by little, I went through that. And I sort of took some baby steps, and I had some help. And I got to the point where I was living most of my days in a library. And I was starting to read about how people survive. Because to me, that was my education. It's almost like you had to reconstruct yourself from a, at a molecular level. I had to reinvent the way I thought I could survive. So I, I and, and this wasn't just from the standpoint of not having any money or any place to live or, or just not knowing where to go. At the same time, I was being pursued. I mean, I had people following me and chasing me down streets. I mean, actual, like, a governmental-type force of people. And I would literally, every three or four days, be put in a position where I had to escape this type of harassment.